El Salvador. We're here with our friend Federico. Hey. Federico, you're here on a one-way ticket, is that right? Yes, yes, Where did you yes. come from? I am Italian, Italian, but I was living in Portugal. Portugal, okay. Yes, yes, and now I... I decided it was time to move and uh, come to Bitcoin country awesome. and the country of freedom. Right. Nice. <laughs> so you're a subscriber of ours, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I really That's like your videos, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much for the great work you're doing. Thank you. This and they are the way you, you also you communicate was vital for me to uh, to take the, to make the decision and come here. Awesome because you really explained very clearly and helped me to get rid of all the fears and doubts. Awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah. great job, guys, Thank really. So Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, other people out there who are thinking about making the same thing, what do you have to say to them? Well, I've been here only for four days, so it's a bit early to give my... my, my, my but the first feeling I have is that this is a great country, uh, you have to be careful on the streets. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you saw that when I <laughs> But the nature is fantastic, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm in San Salvador now, and so uh, it's a beautiful country. The weather is crazy beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I was coming from the cold uh, in Europe, yeah. minus four degrees. Nice. You come here, you wake up every morning with a, the blue sky, the sun. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Great. Paradise, okay. People are friendly yeah. and always welcoming and open. Yeah. I don't That's feel I don't feel in danger in any way yeah. at all, yeah. apart on the streets. Yeah. So yes, yeah. yes, yes. It takes some getting used to. That's for sure. Yes, no, yes. Federico, thank you so, so You're much. so welcome. Thank, thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you, really, yeah. from the bottom of my heart. I'm so happy I met you. Thank you so much for your great work. Yes, yes. So he moved to Houston, and then about a year or two ago, he started to see everybody talk about El Salvador. He was like, what the hell? Like, I'm Salvadoran. Why is everybody talking about El Salvador? And of course, it was because of <laughs> President Bukele. Now we're in the dark. But um, this, is, this is El Salvador. There's no middle of the road, right? It's like, it's very extreme. <laughs> see the total darkness? Or, so um, anyway. So uh, this guy, he started to see all, uh, El Salvador in the news all the time, and he saw these two gringos all the time in the news. And he's like, you know what? Who are those gringos there in my country having a good time? I'm going to return and have a good time too. So he's come back, and he's now a very successful, he has a uh, craft ice cube company. So El Salvador is winning, but you've commented on this, Robert. The media says it's losing, that it's failing, that Bitcoin, the Bitcoin uh, law has failed here, Bitcoin has failed the country. What are your, your like observations on this fact? Yeah, look, I mean, this is my very first time, first day, first evening in El Salvador. So. <laughs> Said, like I, I don't know what I don't know, or right? I see it from a distance. But the thing that I think you're referring to that I commented on was, I think it was from the IMF or the World Bank. They're just threatening, <laughs> threatening El Salvador, saying that El Salvador needed to disband its Bitcoin project because it was guaranteed to fail, something like that. And the, the realization is like, why would you even make a comment like that? 
If you think it's going to fail, just let it fail, right? Exactly. If your business competitor is doing a bad job, you wouldn't go over there and comment and tell them, hey, this is not going to work because what you should adjust and change. You just let it be the catastrophic failure that you actually think it's going to be. So I think that when they're actually uh, denigrating this project or attacking El Salvador or telling them to stop, it's just betraying the actual existential threat that Bitcoin represents to the IMF, the World Bank, Central Bank. And so you just have to trust their actions and their self-interest and not what they say. Yeah. So, Tanya, why are you here in El Salvador? Ah, uh, we want to move here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah? Yeah, um, we've been wanting to get out of the States for some time and we were looking at uh, Panama. Tried to move there, but uh, during the pandemic they closed down. We couldn't get in. And then um, this opportunity happened. We've been Bitcoiners for some time, uh, since like February 18th. Okay. February 2018 and okay. uh, so we've been trying to find a place to go that embraces Bitcoin and um, and then this everything that happened here and uh, so we just arrived on Friday yeah. and uh, we've just been meeting people and talking about Bitcoin everywhere we go yeah. and um, of course had to get here we didn't have tickets we flew in without tickets so yeah. Um, we just in. showed up, we just showed up, you know, and they let us in. Yeah, all are welcome. And um, yeah. had awesome people here at this, um, what's it called, Orange Pill, or, Orange uh, Pill Party? El Salvador's winning party. Oh, yeah. El Salvador's winning. winning. Yeah. yeah, so it's just an incredible time in history, and we just knew we had to be here. Amazing. And so we're excited to move here. We're just getting our paperwork in order with the attorney, or yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah. That you, we saw on Escape your channel. EscapeToElSalvador.org. Yeah, and he's been awesome. We met with him pretty much immediately when we got here. And um, just getting our documents and getting ready to move here. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so you said that you've been thinking about leaving the States for a while. Like, what, what, do, you, what do you mean by that? What, why, why are you thinking well, about leaving for a while? Well, more recently, we just wanted to be somewhere that we felt like um, didn't oppose Bitcoin. I feel like the United States, in a lot of ways, wants to control yeah. uh, your money and does, we, the United States should have been first. It, yeah. it shouldn't have been, but that's great. It's, it's way better for it to be like this grassroots, like this small country. And um, so anyway, I've just seen um, a, a lot I'm not happy with in the United States. I mean, that would be like a long conversation. Yeah, we, we, we know all about that. What about your kids? And we have a 24-year-old daughter in Utah and a 21-year-old daughter also uh, where we live. Wow. And we said, I said, you know, they said, we're scared. Are you really moving? I said, this is the best gift I can give you. I get emotional thinking about it. This is the best gift I can give you is to come here and show you it's safe and this is where we need to be. So I hope that they will see that we can do it and then they'll feel more comfortable coming. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, uh, my family is coming after seeing how happy we are here. So if my family can do it, your family yes. can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for thank taking the time. Thank you. We have a way of ambushing people with interviews, so thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Happy to. All right. Let's get back I to the party. Your work. Let's go. The printing of money is one especially invisible and insidious form of taxation. That you can't detect it. People are confused. Prices are going up, the politicians are blaming the capitalists, people don't know what's going on. Yeah. All the while, it's just theft by your government. The printing money, that's what causes it. So, you know, in the two, 2021, the United States government, $4 trillion in direct tax receipt revenue, so that's a bill to your house, paid to the IRS, and $4 trillion printed, roughly. So in that year, the U.S. government had a 50-50 revenue mix of taxation and inflation. Now, for reasons I won't get into the math right here, but let's just say there are major financial incentives for people to hold savings in Bitcoin rather than fiat. And again, if you understand that inflation is theft, the punchline of that is people don't like to be stolen from, so there's a, a financial advantage to hold your savings and money and nobody can turn it, right? 
in the long run, we would expect most people to wake up to this reality. Even if they don't cognitively awaken to it, they might just get naturally selected out of existence. You just keep seeing in dollars, well, 100 years from now, you're gonna lose 99 to 100% of your purchasing power. So over time, people get forced, in a way, out of their own self-preservation to move from fiat into Bitcoin as a savings technology. In those circumstances, the United States government would have lost half of its revenue in 2021. So what does that mean for any business? If a business loses half of its revenue, what happens to business? It gets cut in half, right? The business shrinks. It doesn't have the capacity to generate revenue that it once had. And so a lot of my thinking on this is from that book, The Sovereign Individual. It makes a comment to the effect that bureaucrats have become accustomed to treating their taxpayers like their cows ready to be milked at will, and in the 21st century, these cows grow wings. So Bitcoin gives taxpayers wings. Your name is? Gladys Jeanette. Gladys Jeanette, yeah. excellent. Okay, so you were saying like you're doing something with like financing for like home purchases and stuff? Yeah, so as of November of last year when adopting Bitcoin was here, Okay. Yeah. I finalized my um, a contract or a way of being able to finance foreigners, so any foreigner. Okay. New Zealand, Canadian, USA, from wherever they're at, no credit check needed. Right. No call signer needed. You don't have to live here at all. You don't have to work here wow. at all. Wow. And um, it's 20% down. We finance okay. um, land, beach homes, homes, construction. We, we, I worked a year and a half almost for this. <laughs> and it finally came through. Amazing. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So do you think that this would be possible if it weren't for all the recent changes happening in El Salvador lately? No, I, I came here because of Bitcoin. Um, when I got here, there was no options for all these Bitcoiners. They, I mean, where do you, where do you, how do you buy? What is the procedure? I've been in real estate for a long time. So when I came here, I absolutely saw the opportunity yeah. of being able to offer it. But how do you offer it to people without them giving all their Bitcoin? You That's know, right, yeah. you want to hold some of it. So I'm like, all right, I got this. Is going to be my mission. And so I did. It right. happened. It happened. It took a very long time, endless emails, endless calls, yeah. everything. Well, this is and, a huge yeah, surprise for us is. because like, we didn't realize it would be so easy to buy property in El Salvador as, as foreigners. We just have temporary residency, right? So this is great news. Yeah. We can't wait to learn more. And as we learn more, we will share that with you because yeah. you guys have been messaging us, asking us this question a yeah. lot. So we yeah, it's available. Wait. It's yeah. available. I just had a couple from Texas come in. I got all their stuff in one day. They actually, We actually opened a bank account within 24 hours that they got here. Amazing. 24 hours. Do you have a website people can check out? Or? Um, it's El Salvador 411. El Salvador 411.com. Dot com. El Salvador 411.com. <laughs> check it out. We're going to check it out when we get home. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, Gladys, thank you so much. Thank you. And I think that is going to be insurmountable going forward because the best and brightest are moving here. We're, we're setting the template. We have the, the, you know, the Bitcoin law, we have the Bitcoin office, we have the Bitcoin embassies, we have the Bitcoin securities laws, which establishes that all those shit coins are securities and Bitcoin is money. Um, we also have the best education system. We have the first Bitcoin diploma. So this is yeah, a great point right. to uh, mention New Career Bitcoin. And they're going to come up on stage and they're going to auction off a bottle of the first ever. Now, well, they call it Burger Whiskey, but apparently I heard that you have to be from Kentucky to call it. Uh, aren't, aren't you from Kentucky or something? Tennessee, close. Close enough. So, uh, because we have somebody from Tennessee, which is close to Kentucky, well, we get to say this is bourbon. John Dennehy happens to be still in the house and wants to auction off his bottled whiskey then, that he claims is bourbon. But, uh, you know, uh, bring it up here. Come on, uh, talk about me for my Bitcoin a bit and, uh, and auction off this bottle of bourbon whiskey. So, me for my Bitcoin, or my first Bitcoin, is a Bitcoin education nonprofit. The mission is the world, but our focus is El Salvador. This is the first country in the world to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. So El Salvador will create precedent. It will be an example for the rest of the world. Yes. That is sure. Pioneers. We get to decide what sort of example that is. Yes. Right? And I, I believe that the foundation for for success, the foundation for a positive example will be independent, impartial Bitcoin education.
2021, we had 400 students. In 2022, we had 10,000. And we have no intention of slowing down. So that was a 25x growth, and we're going to do the same this year. I don't want to impose on you, Max, but I, I think you would be a much better uh, you would be a much better auctioneer than I would. Really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're opening the bid at 100 million. <laughs> 60 million, or it's 50. 50 million going once, unless they're here for 60. 50 million going twice. Oh, 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 and you're in deep. Oh, no! Somebody wants to come up with 70 million. All right, 65 million going once. 65 million going twice. 